One of the questions I get asked from time to time is, can things collapse or go reversed after you start doing the energetics to, to change your reality? So instead of things getting better, just for a moment, they start to feel like they're going backwards. So I wanted to answer this for you all and let me know if this resonates, if you've had this experience. So the answer is yes, they can. So if you think of the six energetic blocks that I uh, talk about and how they might be showing up as you're starting to move forward, then this will help you to understand what's going on and then how to move past it and beyond so you can calibrate to the desire that you're wanting to, to create. And this sticky moment that has bubbled up will melt away. And I get it completely. It can be really frustrating. It triggers all of our nervous systems. I've had this experience myself, so I, I hear you. Um, I invite you just to know that in this moment, you are safe. You have got this. You can do this. And let's use this opportunity to, to, to get really curious about what's going on. So the six energetic blocks that I talk about, the first one is resonance rift. So this is where there's a conflict between the different layers of our consciousness, your higher self, your conscious mind, your subconscious. So remember, your subconscious has a 100% success rate in delivering your programming. And we want to move from our subconscious leading the way to our different layers of consciousness being aligned for our manifesting and to have our higher self leading the way whilst we're taking care of our programming in our subconscious by balancing the deep inner healing work with impactful helixing manifesting rituals. So inviting you to, to contemplate, okay, so we've got that piece of the puzzle that may be, may be going on as we're boldly moving forward. We've got the somatic default set point. So your default set point is pulling you back. So you may have had a thought that caused you to act in a certain way and then created the response and the experience that you're currently having and bringing you back to that chemical reaction that the body knows and feels so well. And this is happening because you're not yet embodied in this in this new identity that you're required to hold so that you can have a new set point and to be able to be fully embodied in the consciousness of, of, of your future self. So this is where I invite you to think about how can the current obstacle that's bubbled up, how can it become the way? What would that future version of yourself be doing in this now moment as they've seen that experience bubbling up they've already experienced it so what is it that they would be doing and as we think about this you you'll know that the third energetic block that i talk about is called your nervous system pinnacle so this is the the peak of the capacity of your nervous system and as you're responding to the reality that you're currently experiencing your nervous system is triggered and you can find yourself in the flight fight freeze fawn flop response and this is when where the helixing is going to be helping you to have the emotional resilience to keep your heart in that coherent state so that you can make decisions from that higher realm of consciousness that and that your future self-consciousness so that you're going to be able to move beyond this current experience that you're having that you know whatever you're seeing in your current reality and there's two key self-concepts that are going to be really really helpful here which link to your identity and developing the future identity that is already experiencing what you desire. So it's our current identity. That is one of the other energetic blocks that I talk about that it has created the reality that we're experiencing. So we can start to see things fall away. Um, and you may hear me talk about the contraction before the expansion. So when we're starting to change our identity and the different layers of consciousness and, and energy, when we aren't yet embodied in our future self-consciousness, in that future identity, this is what can start to happen. So these are the two self-concepts that are going to be really, really helpful when you start to imprint these to create that embodiment and for you to be able to hold a new default set point, regardless of the stuff that is showing up in as it does in business. So the first one is the self-concept that you are the kind of business owner that makes sales every day. You're the kind of business owner who has taken care of their expenses in the first two weeks of each month. And giving yourself that intention and that focus, it actually creates spaciousness at the end of the month. It collapses the timeline and it allows momentum to, to build more quickly. So inviting you to start to imprint that 
self-concept into your consciousness so that you are the kind of person that makes sales every day? What would that look like in your business? And people have different types of businesses, so it may look very different. So I invite you to start to explore what that what would that self-concept look like in, in, in your business? And then the second one is trust, self-trust, and being able to really imprint this, that you are the kind of entrepreneur who can trust yourself each day even more because you're planning ahead. Because of the experiences you had, because of this experience right now, you can trust yourself even more. You're the kind of entrepreneur that has those 5K cash weeks, 10K cash weeks, 20K cash weeks, 100K cash week, whatever it is for you that it, you're looking at to create for this month. Let's collapse it and set the intention. We're going to bring it in for this week. And to add to that self-concept, to think of that you are a safe pair of hands. You know that you're a safe pair of hands. You trust your hands. And what can bubble up at these moments in times where doubt can start to kind of kick in is to think about actually as we're being really intentional and setting the intention to start to really develop our relationship with trust and trusting ourselves and trusting the universe is to think about how much do you trust the universe? You know that this is a vibrational universe. The universe is never late. And to think of this in terms of really being able to create that frequency and being able to hold it is to, and as I speak about this, to use the spiritual term that resonates for you. So whether it's universe, source, God, Allah, higher power, whatever the, the term is for you, this is a beautiful um, affirmation to imprint. I trust the universe. The universe is in me. I trust me. And just allow yourself to kind of feel the frequency of that. Just taking a nice couple of deep breaths in for four, out for four. Trust the universe. The universe is in me. I trust me. And here, part of this experience is really being able to develop your relationship with trust, the level of trust in yourself, to be able to get to that point, that deep inner knowing of no, it's going to be okay. As you know that the sun will rise tomorrow, we don't trust it. We know it. That's that level of trust that we have. Does that make sense? So those are the two self-concepts that can be really, really helpful that, to start imprinting these as you're moving through the stickiness that has shown up, the contraction before the expansion. So the self-concept that you're the business owner that makes sales every day and you are the kind of entrepreneur that can trust themselves every day even more. The other energetic block there's two more to speak to we've got the energetic buffering and the strategic dissonance so what can come up here is that energetically you're experiencing an old vibration so if you think about I invite you to think about four uh, three weeks ago what was happening three weeks ago in terms of when you look back how you were experiencing yourself three weeks ago was there doubt was there fear what were you focused on then your reality is catching up now does that make sense where was there something that was happening three weeks ago? It could be sooner, two weeks, three weeks. But typically, I've noticed when I'm working with clients, when we start to kind of track back, that's where they're like, oh, I can see what was happening now. OK, so this is great. If you can see it or if you can't see it, just to know that all the imprinting you're doing now is going to start to build momentum and you'll start to really see a shift in two to three weeks time. So you've got this. The, the invitation here is to do the inner work with the helixing that I am uh, sharing with you so you can start to build the momentum and to do this daily. Truly, this works. And I'm so excited to see what starts to shift for you as you start to raise your frequency. OK, so that's the energetic buffering. And then the last one I wanted to speak to was um, what I call strategic dissonance. So this is where we're applying a strategy that might have been aligned at one point um, and then we've come out of alignment with it. So. Are you applying a strategy that is you're out of alignment with? Whether it's implementing a policy, a program, a product, whatever it might be. Just to kind of take that stock and to go, okay, so is there any resistance here that's bubbling up? Have I got any dissonance in the strategies that I'm applying with? And so that you can use this opportunity to take care of it so you can bring yourself more into alignment with the path that you're wanting to go on. So really get, Get curious and to consider how can the obstacle become the way to soothe the nervous system, 
a great hack to be able to really speak to the subconscious and to the body is to say to yourself, I'm safe, I'm calm, I choose to be here. This speaks directly to your subconscious. You can really start to open up again and to listen to the wisdom of your higher self. Your higher self is going to help you to navigate through this rather than being in that space of fear and contraction that is completely can feel like, of course, you're feeling the fear and the contraction because of the, the experience that suddenly has happened and the amygdala is taking over. But we want to be able to allow ourselves to feel those feelings, to acknowledge them and go, OK, this is really interesting. I'm having a fear response. The amygdala is kicking in. OK, I'm safe, calm. I choose to do this. I'm creating a future identity that's going to be able to has already resolved this, this situation that I'm facing. And being able to, as you raise your heart frequency and to raise your frequency, be able to make decisions from this place and you'll be able to move through this much, much more quickly. So I hope that helps. Let me know what resonates. We've got you covered. Let's talk about this in, in the comments. We'd love to know, have you had this experience where things have started to go reversed um, or feel like they've collapsed energetically as you've just started to, to, to move forward um, with your intention? Or where has this happened for you? Have you had that contraction before the expansion or the expansion, um, that expansion contraction roller coaster? Let's start to, to really explore what's going on here so that you can make those a thing of the past and to move through when they do show up with more ease and grace and less triggering in the nervous system. Anyway, sending you so much love. Looking forward to continuing the conversation in the comments.